Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with jazz singer Laura Campisi. She talked candidly about her latest album, Double Mirror, growing up in Sicily, and much, much more. So get to know her and dig this interview, my friends. Again, thank you very much for, for taking some time out. And I want to start off right now and ask you about Double Mirror. It's your debut album. How do you feel about it? Okay, so yeah, I was just saying that uh, it, I am very happy with uh, Double Mirror and, uh, you know, the entire adventure of putting it out. Uh, it, uh, it has been uh, teaching me so much about, you know, the, uh, the market of music and also, you know, how an artist nowadays uh, kind of needs to be able to uh, work with different tools. Uh, to push their art. So it has been a great school for me so far. So where did you grow up? I was born and raised in Sicily, Italy. I'm Wonderful. from Palermo. <laughs> Wonderful. In fact, my, uh, I'm, I'm, my dad was full-blooded Italian. Half of his family came from Naples, and the other half came from Shaka. Oh, okay. So you're partially Sicilian, too. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I am. So... Um, what was it? What was your childhood like in Sicily, and how did you get so interested in jazz? Well, uh, childhood was sweet because you know, uh, living in Sicily, it's um, it's hard when you're an adult, but for a kid, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Okay. Um, and my family was always so supportive of, uh, you know, my music inclination. So not only they always supported me uh, and, uh, you know, helped me um, be in touch with this part of who I am, but they also uh, shared a lot of music with me. They are music lovers themselves, and uh, uh, I believe that this is part of, you know, how and why I grow up to be a singer. Um, in terms of jazz, though, it was a little random, actually, because uh, I remember uh, when I was 13, uh, one day my dad uh, asked me um, if, uh, if I wanted to start uh, studying vocals. Uh, and, and, of course, I said yes, because uh, that's all I wanted to do in that moment, just like keep singing. Uh, and I ended up in a jazz school in Palermo, a private jazz school, but I didn't know what jazz was. So it took me a moment, you know, to actually start uh, uh, digging into that and, uh, and finding myself completely, you know, in tune with that kind of uh, music that was new to me. What jazz albums did you listen to in the beginning? Mm, okay, well, the first, the very first one was uh, a, a collection of uh, Airline Louis. <laughs> Right. And I remember I purchased it uh, online. Uh, it was that and the Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> but then as soon as I got a little bit more into it, then I started listening to Miles Davis and uh, Billie Holiday. And, yeah, I was listening to uh, a lot of jazz when I was in high school. And I can tell you, my, my schoolmates, they, they, didn't, they didn't know what to do with it. When you started performing on stage, has it been a natural fit for you? Have you always felt comfortable performing? Yeah, I, yeah. I completely remember, like, it was yesterday, the first time that I, you know, that I had to step on a stage and just, like, perform in front of an audience. That was at the end of my first uh, year of uh, uh, private uh, private school, jazz private school. And, uh, and I remember that I was petrified. They literally had to push me out of the curtain and be like, "Okay, this is your moment, and you have to go." Yeah. Uh, and I was, I, I was so scared. But as soon as I started singing, uh, everything just, you know, melted away. <laughs> the the doubt, uh, the insecurity, it all went away. And uh, I feel like, you know, sometimes when I am put in front of like a particularly demanding moment in my career. Uh, it's always the same thing, you know, like you're scared at the moment before you step on stage, and then when you step on stage, you're just someone else. Absolutely. So when did you leave Sicily for the United States? Um, I first visited New York at the end of 2010, uh, but um, I felt so like home right away, and uh, and that made me, you know, uh, start working on uh, chances for me to come back and stay. And uh, so I, I got my first artist visa at the end of uh, 2011, and that's when I moved to to, to see. 
You know, the one thing that's very evident about your music is there's a lot of passion. Of course, I know growing up with a full-blooded Italian father that that's a part of the culture. I've been to Italy several times as well, and I know that, you know, the Italians are very known for passion, and they speak loud, they use their hands. There's a lot of emotion that goes <laughs> into being alive on this planet. So how, how do you, that. Yeah, exactly. How have you channeled this passion for your background and being Sicilian into your music? Well, uh, in terms of my presence on stage, uh, I think that's uh, like it's pretty it's pretty present. It's it's kind of obvious. Like I use my hands a lot. I use my body a lot, and uh, sometimes maybe a little too much. <laughs> I don't know about that, um, but it's just normal for me to use you know my body not only to channel the music but also you know the emotions that I want to uh, present to the audience with. So I really use my body a lot in that sense. And I think that is, uh, you know, somewhat related to my to my roots <laughs> and what we're uh, referring to. In terms of the music, uh, of course, I have, you know, like a couple of projects that are dedicated to Italian music and Sicilian music. Uh, and the way that I work on that repertoire is very uh, jazz oriented because uh, my way of seeing, you know, jazz is like it's such a powerful language in terms of colors, in terms of uh, a variety of rhythms, uh, and, uh, you know, the elaboration of the music that you can really do with it. So for me, it's more of a tool that I use to repro reproduce and represent some um, repertoires like the Italian and the traditional Sicilian one uh, in, a dif in a slightly different key. Maybe a key that can make that kind of repertoire more understandable and enjoyable by an international audience. Um, but in terms of, you know, the, uh, the music uh, um, imaginary that's connected to Sicily, I think that is kind of part of who I am. And, uh, and so in, a, in, um, in such a ways, I think you can, you can find a little bit of the Arabic touch, a little bit of that, you know, uh, kind of um, uh, raw um, attitude <laughs> towards the lyrics, uh, towards the melodies, uh, that really brings out that passion that you were talking about. Wonderful, wonderful. Laura, I gotta tell you what, I think I think I got a good overview of your album and in and, 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 and this conversation, I think I got kind of what I want for, for the interview and for the show segment. So thank you for taking some time out. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much for interviewing me and for, you know, dedicating time uh, to Double Mirror. Thanks for listening and tuning in to yet another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in New York, Kansas City, Sicily, and spots all over the globe, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Laura for her time, her music, and her stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Jazz.